All right, like Carol said, I'm Kathy Zant, I work for WordFence. Um, tonight we're gonna to be talking about evaluating plugins. Um, just to give you, oh, please tell me you're not gonna put it on me now. Again, it, I'm cursed with computers <laughs> in this presentation. This happened to me in Miami with this exact presentation where it just, it, yeah, it's up. Help. websites before WordPress even existed. And then WordPress came along and I was blogging as well. WordPress used the same database connection tools, so I said, well, I'm going to use this uh, tool and see what happens. And it became incredibly robust and powerful. Over the last three years, I've been working for WordFence. I started, um, they put out a call for people who could clean hacked websites. And I said, ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but <laughs> it was the coolest uh, activity looking at, because every time you looked at a new site, you found something new. So I learned a lot about security. Um, and this talk is sort of a security talk, but it's also talking about um, just generally what makes WordPress awesome, which is the plugins. Um, our goals are to learn some strategies for choosing plugins for your project. Um, when you're using uh, WordPress, you're, you're not just blogging anymore. I mean, it started out as a blogging platform, but because they made it extensible, and it's, it's beyond just you know making a blog look pretty, um, and plugins can do so many different types of things, um, we have to make some good decisions about what we're plugging into our site. So we're gonna look and see if a plugin is the right tool for the job if it's some, some parameters for seeing whether or not it's high quality, if it's being maintained, and if it's safe. And, because I've cleaned so many hack sites, I have some horror stories, so it might get a little scary. So why do we want to do this? Does anybody here cook? All right, so nobody wants to cook now because it's like a billion degrees outside, but let's say we want to make a nice salad and we're putting ingredients into that salad and the tomatoes are rotten. What happens to the salad? Yeah. Ew, it's nasty, right? Nobody wants to eat that. Well, plug-in code is kind of like the tomatoes in the salad. You wanna make sure you have a good ingredient in your dish because those ingredients matter. Does, is there anybody here who doesn't know, well, anybody that doesn't know what a plug-in is has never installed a plug-in on their site before? Really? You, you, you've never used a plugin before? No, I, it's, it's all new to you. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. We're glad you're here. <laughs> and, okay, so have you installed WordPress yet? Okay. <laughs> yeah, alarms go off when we have newbies. <laughs> So in WordPress, we hear a lot, there's a plugin for that, because plugins can do pretty much anything. Um, this is just a list of things that were like in the top, like top plugins. So there's contact forms, contact form seven is the number one contact form. There's things to help you with search engine optimization. Uh, Yoast is one of those, uh, all-in-one SEO, and then there's a XML sitemap generator. There's e-commerce, there's a number of e-commerce ones. WooCommerce is the big one. Anti-spam, Akismet's the big one there. Uh, backups, Updraft Plus is a pretty cool backup utility. And security plugins, of which WordFence is the big one on three million sites. So plugins take that basic blogging platform 
and turn it into a fully functional data-driven website that supports your business. Now, why is that important? Let's take an example of, say, a rock band's website. Um, what would a rock band want to do? It's, it's, they're trying to communicate with their customers, right? So they have um, their tour schedule. So they might do just a post for that, but wouldn't it be cool if there was an event calendar that could do their tour schedule? What if they want to sell t-shirts or digital downloads of their music? Plugins add this additional functionality and makes a small business website look like it's actually running or being run by a big business. So it's basically taking tools that developers have spent many hours to create and puts it in the hands of whoever is running WordPress and using those plugins. So plugins insert <laughs> new functionality and bring your new site to life. So your creation comes alive. I really, this is my favorite slide. <laughs> I love that movie. And of course with that power comes great responsibility. Now if somebody's visiting your website, whose responsibility is it what's happening on that site? Is it the plugin developer? Is it your hosting provider? Is it Matt Mullenweg or WordPress.org's responsibility for what's happening on your site? If your site's hacked, whose responsibility is it to make sure it's cleaned up? It's your responsibility. Whatever's happening on your site basically is your choice. And so you need to make good decisions based on good data to make sure that whatever's happening on your site is good for your customers because that's good for your business. And it's all about performance. What can a plugin do for you? Will it do what it says it will? And will it do no harm? And we don't want any monsters on your site. Speaking of monsters, <laughs> this guy, Mason Soiza. Now you know where you get your plugins. You use your plugins from a place called the repository. You go to wordpress.org and forward slash plugins, and you can search for any plugin to do anything that you'd like it to do. There's over 55,000, I think at this time, plugins in there. This guy, now a lot of plugin developers you know, they, they create a plugin and they do it because they need it. And it's like, well, I think other people can use this. And so they submit it to the repository. And if it's useful to you, you can go and download that plugin and install it on your site. This guy contacted plugin developers and said, I would like to buy your plugin. And plugin developer, well, you know, I've got this other business I need to run. Sure, I'll sell it. He bought it and then started adding spam links into the plugins and then just added a new version to the repository and people went into their dashboard and saw you know, this plugin 401-303 redirect, or 404-301 redirect plugin was one of them. Um, I need to update this. Updated it and get Mason's code, which is then redirecting people to escort services in the UK. So he did this, he added spam links to his own sites and backdoors so that he could get into people's sites. Our researchers at WordPress found this, brought it to the plugin team, and things you know, got shut down fast. Um, and Mason is in his own little world of trouble with the authorities in the UK because of some of the things he was doing. He was directing to like payday loan sites and UK med sites. Um, selling actually opioid, opioids online, um, doing all kinds of nasty things, which apparently have very high SEO needs, and so therefore he was leveraging um, gaps in security in um, the plugin repository. Because the community was on top of this and saw what was happening, because the researchers at WorkBench were able to go into the repository, see what was there, and bring it to the attention to get it all shut down. It wasn't there for very long. Um, the power of the community is really what um, took this guy down. But the thing is, WordPress is installed on millions of sites. It's powering about a third of the internet, of the biggest 100 million sites right now. It's a powerful platform, but it's also a huge target for guys like this. So the types of plugins that exist, 
um, like you said, the repository's got about 55 million, or 55,000 um, free and open source WordPress plugins. Uh, if you go to the plugins directory, you can find contact form seven, um, duplicate post, super cache, all kinds of different plugins to extend the functionality of your site. Freemium plugins. Now these are plugins that are on the repository, but have sort of a paid service to it. So WordFence is like this. You can download WordFence and put it on your site. And if you wanted to buy a premium license, it would unlock you know, a few additional features that would also keep your site safe. There are additional plugins like this. Yoast has a premium um, piece. Smush Updraft Plus is another one that's got this sort of premium model where they release most of the code to the repository and you can unlock additional features. <laughs> Um, now there's also premium and commercial completely paid plugins like, um, and these plugins can be found on Theme Forest and Code Canyon. These are not on any repository. You have to buy them before you see what's in them. Before you, see, you might see a demo site to see how they work, but you have to buy the plugin before you can use it. You can't try it out. There's also um, a Node plugin. So if you went and tried to search for like smush free or smush unlocked or smush nulled, you can find that plugin and it may work just fine, but it's also a trap. These plugins have um, usually have malware and backdoors in them, so we recommend that you don't try to find something for free because you're going to probably just self-infect your site. So do you get you what you pay for when you buy a paid plugin? So these plugins in the repository are all, all open source. Uh, security researchers are constant, we have one of them here in the room, Mikey, my coworker, is a security researcher who downloads plugins and is looking at them all the time. In order to keep Mikey's credentials up, Mikey has to find security vulnerabilities, and report on them, and um, make sure that the web is a safer space. So, it's an awesome research re research capability um, and resource for researchers like Mikey to find these types of vulnerabilities because it's all open source. You can find it, find any vulnerability, report it, get it patched. <coughs> On the paid sites, Mikey, how much? How often do you go and spend like fifty dollars to research a plugin? More than I want. <laughs> you don't want to have to do that. It's expensive and it's hard work. And so these paid plugins don't have the exposure to security researchers to find out what's going on with them. And because of that, that due diligence then ends up in your lap. You are responsible for what's happening on your site. So if something is wrong with the plugin and it's on your site, you have the, you have the responsibility for doing that research is on you. So here is a plugin horror story. And this is all Mikey's fault. <laughs> there is this showed up in um, in our inbox. Uh, Pipdig is a theme developer in the UK. A lot of fashion bloggers really like to use Pipdig thing themes, and um, somebody noted that they saw some strange things happening on a site, and they turned over the paid plugin source code, and Mikey started tearing it apart and a couple other guys were tearing it apart, but you, what, spent an entire weekend? It was about a week total. About a week total, tearing this guy apart. And um, our Slack channel, as Mikey was tearing this apart, was uh, entertaining, to say the least, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Now look at this, now look at this. So here's just a little snippet of code. If you go on, it, well basically, if you Google PipDig, you can read the entire story. Um, there's also a podcast about what Mikey found if you really want to dive deep into what was going on. But basically, Mikey found that this code, although uh, well, there was a plugin that was associated with theme. So if you installed the theme, you needed to have the supportive plugin. You install that, and it was full of malware, and full of backdoors and full of some code that very specifically just said, um, if this is going on, uh, there was like, a, what, a cron job that was checking, um, checking their servers to see if your site should get deleted? Yeah, once an hour, your site would ask their site for permission to kill itself. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 
that, that's not something you want to have on your site. You don't want your theme developer to have, you know, God mode ability to destroy your hard work. That's not good. Now this was a paid plugin. You bought the theme, the plugin came along with it. Uh, it was not on any repository. Security researchers weren't actively able to like go and poke at this until somebody called it to a security researcher's attention. And it was, uh, it turned into sort of this dramatic thing where all these fashion bloggers then were like, but we love Pip Dick. Pip Dick would never do anything to us and started actually questioning. If, you know, if they can't read PHP, they, they don't know what's actually going on. I mean, it's kind of like your doctor when your doctor's looking at your x-ray and saying, yeah, you, you, you broke your leg. And, well, I don't see a break. <laughs> you know, it looks like a leg x-ray. And, and you don't have the technical expertise to say a hairline fracture in there or whatever. Um, security researchers and people who understand how PHP works took a look at this plugin and said, this is bad. And it wasn't just deleting your site. There were a number of other things, and it wasn't just WordPress that they were doing this to. It was Blogger, and blo the Blogger themes were actually pulling in code from the PipDig servers and doing other malicious things, and even, weren't they actually trying to take down one of their competitors with some of the code, too? Yep. It yeah, was, uh, yeah. Using all of the sites that they had sold code to. <laughs> so like a little zombie army they created of, of these sites that were actually trying to attack then one of their competitors. So this is what ha can happen, and this is why it's really important. And, and this is not to scare you away from you shouldn't like stop developing sites, but this is why we need to make good decisions of what we are putting on our sites. Just because you're paying somebody, you, you know, you expect I'm paying you, therefore what I'm getting in return should be of the highest integrity and of the highest quality. But that's not always the case. So when you're researching plugins, you're probably like, oh my gosh, I wonder if I have a plugin or a theme that's doing this kind of crazy stuff. There's some things you can do. You can search for hacked vulnerability in the plugin name. Um, broker broken is another phrase you can use. Slow site performance, if you're looking at issues of, you know, a plugin causing problems with your site. Um, and if it's being supported, you can search for that as well. But that, I don't know about you, but I got some other things to do. <laughs> I don't want to have to do this. So it's really great that we have something called the repository, which has a number of tools on it that will help you figure out if a plugin is worth your while. So questions you can answer on WordPress.org. Is it updated? So on the sidebar for every plugin, there is a number of, a number of statistics. So you can see what version it is, the last time it was updated, active installations, um, which version of WordPress it works with, um, what it's been tested up to, as well as ratings. So you can see if it's updated, um, if it's loved. And, and not all of these things, not any one thing is, is critically important, but all of these things kind of go into that, the hopper of making good judgments about plugins. So if a plugin is not updated or tested, the repository tells you. At the top, and it's kind of hard to see it on here, and I'll make these slides available on the Meetup um, group. It'll say that it has not been tested with the latest releases. Now I still have this on a site somewhere, limit login at times, just because I haven't deleted it yet. Um, there's other tools out there, but I, nothing's wrong with it. It just hasn't been actively maintained. It hasn't been updated in seven years. Um, is it going to work with the next version of WordPress? I don't know. Um, it works with five. <laughs> but it, you, you're, the, the diligence is on you when you're dealing with a plugin that has not been actively updated. This may have performance problems. This may have compatibility problems. It may have security problems. Nobody's watching what's going on with this guy. On the repository, you can tell whether or not a site is being supported. There are support forums on the repository. So this plugin was add, to, add categories to pages, and it had a five-star review. Does that mean it's good? Not necessarily. So if we look at some of the support topics, we see that people are saying that it breaks other plugins. 
they posted that a year ago and nobody responded. Um, is this plugin dead? Nobody responded. It's basically a zombie plugin, nobody's babysitting this one either. And they're not answering support questions. Do you want to put this on your site? Yeah, I wouldn't. The change log is something that most non-technical people won't look at. But if you go on the plugin page on the repository and you look under development, there's something called the change log. This is awesome. Now this screen grab is a little bit old. It's from a plugin called Ultimate Member. They've had a lot of problems lately. But <laughs> um, they're also telling you what's going on with every version of that plugin. They'll tell you what they're updating. So this was from last year, and they're basically saying that there were some bug fixes and that they're fixing security vulnerabilities and what those exactly are. File image uploader, HTML arguments. So they're telling you, hey, we found, somebody found security problems and we fixed them. There are plugins that will just say we have an update, but not necessarily saying what's been done. When you are putting a plugin on your site, you're putting somebody else's code on your site, you're getting into a relationship with a developer, just like Piptic. Do you want a relationship with somebody who's doing those types of things? So this is actually a sign of a good relationship. So this is kind of like, you know, hey honey, I stayed all night, I met all, all night drinking, but at least I'm home now, <laughs> type of thing. Um, so you can decide whether or not you would like to forgive this plugin for their security transgressions of the past, because they're at least being honest with you. If there's no change log, definitely wonder what's going on. Reviews are awesome, but just like with any review, uh, you're gonna see all kinds of different quality of reviews. Some reviews are gonna be awesome, and some reviews are going to be, um, not tell you very much. Um, you have to take them all with a grain of salt and read some one-star reviews, some two-star. Don't read all the five stars and think that you're gonna say, oh, well, everything's perfect. Really try to look for patterns in reviews. If, you, if somebody's like, review, if you keep seeing all the time that you know, I'm having a problem you know, deleting this plugin after I'm done with it and it's, it's not deleting everything, or, or if you constantly see the same type of complaint, take that into consideration. Here's a resource that's really helpful. Um, it's wpvulndb.com. And on this website, all vulnerabilities that, ha that have been reported to um, the this, this site are listed. So this little screen grab is from Yoast, a very, very old version of Yoast, uh, 1.7.3.3. Just because you see a plugin with vulnerabilities on this database doesn't mean that there's a problem. Again, you're looking for patterns of problems, um, and you don't want to install that version. You know, if there's an actual vulnerable version, um, you don't want to install that one. You want to make sure it's updated. Um, but you're looking for patterns of problems here. So it's a good resource. Uh, Manage WP has a plugin comparison tool, which is really kind of cool. If you're looking at like a couple of, say you want to improve the SEO for your site, and you want, you're not sure which tool you should use. And you've heard some good things about some plugins and you want to just kind of compare them. But this tool actually is just pulling information out of the repository so it doesn't have any information that's new, but it's going to show it to you in ways that make comparison easier. So here I just did a screen grab showing a very small SEO plugin called the SEO Framework, which is very lightweight and also does SEO improvements um, versus Yoast, which is kind of a behemoth and very large now and has a lot of different features and maybe, be, maybe is way more than you actually need for your particular project. Uh, the metrics are pretty simple, but it gives you just a quick look to look at what's going on with the plugins. Um, here's another resource. Um, this is RIPS Code Risk. And it's kind of fun because they have an algorithm that actually looks at different plugins and looks at whether or not that code is safe. Um, I haven't really tried to understand the algorithm. I think this tool is kind of fun to look at, but um, that it, just because you see something that has like a real high score, it just means that you have to dig a little 
little bit further with it. Um, these, this is just sort of like the largest sites right here. Uh, contact four and seven has a very low cold risk skill, uh, score, but the trends for uh, contact four and seven when it first started it had a higher score. And there's a plugin called Says Who that has less than 10 active installations, is still on the repository, and has had like 45, 4,600 downloads, has 100, something's going on with that one, has a high probability of having some risk. Doesn't mean there's a vulnerability that's known in it, but it just has a higher risk. So it's another tool if you're evaluating a plugin and you're going to make a commitment to putting a plugin on your site. You might want to look and see what its code risk score is. You can also take a look at the code yourself. You can actually go on the site on wordpress.org, download a copy of that plugin, the zip file, unpack it, and look at it with a text editor if you want to look at PHP. Um, I know a lot of people don't want to do that, but some of us crazy people think it's cool. And here's a site on GitHub, um, Ethical Hacker. Uh, is Ryan Dewhurst is the actual guy's name, and he's got um, plug-in security testing cheat sheet. So he basically has some functions on this page that you can actually like do a search in that plugin and see if there's actually some possible vulnerabilities in it. If you want to become a security researcher, WordFence is actually pretty cool because it helps you manage your plugins. Not is it not only is it going to scan your site and look for malware and protect your site using a firewall, it's also going to tell you when you have a security problem. So you have WordFence installed on your site, it scans, you know, depending on how often, if you have a premium, you can set it scan whenever, and if you're just using the free one, I think it scans every two to three days, and it will email you, actually, and you can go, you know, click the link in the email and go onto your site and see what security issues and vulnerabilities it has found. So it will alert you if you need an upgrade. If it's a security upgrade that needs to be done, it will actually tell you. This is from Ultimate Member, and it's saying that there's a security vulnerability there. It's also going to tell you if a plugin is abandoned. So if a plugin is not being actively maintained, it will tell you that it looks like it's been abandoned by the developer. Um, this website, um, Daniel. Bach Hoover um, has a subdomain that on, on which he had a searchable database on which you could tell if a site was or, or if a plugin was going to work with Gutenberg. Um, he's closed the project, but the CSV file is still there, so you can actually like go and do some research there. Most plugins now, I think, are Gutenberg ready if you're diving into Gutenberg. I think you told me about this one. <laughs> this is a debug bar. And this is a plugin that's available on the repository. And it will tell you if a plugin is affecting your site's performance. So it gives you some metrics and gives you some tools where you can drill down into what that plugin is actually doing with the PHP code and the MySQL database on your site. Best practices to who here does not have a test version of their site? Okay. <laughs> Mikey, you don't have a test version of your site? <laughs> don't. <laughs> That's about it. I don't, I don't have a test version of my site either because I don't really care. You know, if my site goes down, I'll just start from backup and start, start over again or something. I don't know. Um, I do back up my site though. <laughs> Um, if you have a high, um, high uh, important site, if, it, if it's going to cost you money and cause you problems, if your site's going to go down, you want to be able to test plugin updates someplace else. Don't do it on production. Especially when you're going from, say, um, a plugin version 5.9.3 and you're going up to 6.0, and it's a brand new, you know, when those major version bumps, they're adding new functionality, they're adding new features, there's new stuff in there. 
Those are the types of uh, plug-in jumps that you're going to want to test on a test server. You want that test server to look very much like your production server. Um, I think it was Jetpack, was it 5.0? Did not play nicely with PHP 5.2. And uh, anybody who went on to, um, went on to uh, their plugin page and clicked update for Jetpack, had, it, it, it were running um, PHP version 5.2, which some old hosts at that time were using, and they clicked update for Jetpack. That's, that site would white screen, and there was no recovery at all. <laughs> and you could go into error logs and see what was going on when you know requests were being made to that. Um, but it took some troubleshooting. And so if you want to make sure that a plugin update, I think they fixed it in like uh, Jetpack 5.1 or whatever, but they put out a, a patch pretty quickly to fix that problem because they probably had like massive support uh, increase. But uh, yeah, if you jumped on that update, on that dot .o update right away, your site went down. I had to fix those because <laughs> a lot of people thought their site was hacked and it wasn't. It was just Jetpack and being incompatible. So you're going to want to test new plugins on a test site. Um, make sure that they're working. Look for effectiveness. Look to make sure there's no compatibility problems with other plugins. If you're running WooCommerce and you're selling things and your store is your bank account and you're, installing, you're updating plugins on the production site and it goes down, nobody can buy anything. It affects your bank account. So best practices of plugin management. Um, if you're not using the plugin, don't just deactivate it, uninstall it, get that code off of your server, otherwise it's code you have to babysit. Keep all of your plugins updated. Um, you might want, if, if it doesn't look like a security update, if it's a .o type of update type of situation, you might want to just, you know, hold off for a few days and let, you know, other people go through the white screen of death for you. Um, but try to keep your plugins updated and um, watch for security alerts. Um, subscribe to WordPress's blog. It, whenever we find something, it gets published fairly frequently. Um, subscribe to, use WordPress, it'll tell you if you have a uh, problem. Subscribe to other security researchers' blogs or the WP Phone DB has an email that goes out whenever they post something new. And audit and review your plugins periodically. Go over some of these parameters and see has a plugin stopped being updated? Go and see if a plugin has new code that looks like it might be risky. And the end result of taking care of your plugins is that you're going to have a functional site, you're going to have a safe site, you're going to have happy customers, entertained site visitors, and you're going to have the performance of a lifetime. So keep in touch. Um, Follow me on Twitter. Uh, we have a podcast, It's Like a Hacker, where we talk about the vulnerabilities and that we're finding. We talk about all kinds of security issues and scary security things going on, and you can always email me. But I'm also open for questions. I think I've got a little more time. Absolutely. So if you have questions, I am happy to answer them. Can we get a copy of your slides? Yes, I will post them on the Meetup link, and I'll post them on uh, the Slack. Has anybody ever had a plugin go? rogue on them and cause problems on their site? What was the one that got you, Dave? It's been a minute, but Tim Thumb. Tim Thumb, oh. Yeah. Actually, Tim Thumb is the whole reason WordPress even exists. Wow. I've heard that story, that's cool. Yeah, I, I think almost everybody I know who was in WordPress at the time had Tim, I had Tim Thumb. Mm -hmm. I had to clean up a site that had Tim Thumb and Mark Monder, our CEO, his site was hacked because of Tim Thumb. So when I was doing site cleaning, actually, the one way I could tell if uh, it was a Tim Thumb uh, vulnerable file is whether or not I saw my boss's name at the top of the file, because the patched version of Tim Thumb says Ben Gilbanks and Mark Monder as the credit, and that vulnerable version just says Ben Gilbanks. So that was the only way, yeah. All right, I know how this one happened. So 
oh yeah, 10 thumb. That was an old vulnerability, but because it was packaged with so many themes, um, there's, there's quite a few like packages of code. Um, Freemius is one recent one that's in a lot of uh, plugins and themes. Um, what else? Slider Revolution was one that was really bad a few years ago. And, and there, these are, are uh, plugins and themes that are packaged with other things. And so you, your scans will look like everything looks okay, but boom, you have a hidden vulnerability <coughs> hiding on your site. So it's good to, if you're using anything, um, any premium plugins and themes especially, to really stay up with what's going on with them. Any other questions? I guess that's it.